Welcome to the Top 10 Gardener with Master Gardener, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and top 10 advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your garden host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. Your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And we're in the holidays, kind of a, a slower time in the garden, or less stressful, less time-sensitive gardening now, but still plenty of gardening, you know, cleanups in our house. So planted three trees this week. So some things have been going, lots of evergreens. So was, uh, some Arizona cypress, um, things I want to screen. It's time to look at and kind of clean up and then open up and then add to the landscape. And, and I, I thought I'd share just one thing that that I find the secret to winter planting. Uh, you, this time, you can plant in northern Arizona whenever the ground is not frozen, which is pretty much all the time. And so most of the folks in, let's say, colder areas, let's say uh, Durango and further north, the Midwest, uh, you, you all, the ground freezes and you can't get a pick through that ice. Well, we don't have that. I think our ground froze. I think it was real cold the day of or the day before Christmas. And there was maybe, maybe a quarter inch. I doubt that much. I've had a little bit of the, the pond is frozen over once. And so it's, has, and, and then it just quickly thawed. And so it's just things aren't, we don't have that crazy cold that a lot of places have, which means if you can get a hole in the ground, if you can get a shovel in the ground, you can plant. And the plants like it. It's fine. We've actually, they would rather be in the ground at your house than in the container here at the garden center. So the plants that we have now are kind of skewed towards more winter planting kind of things. That is a lot of evergreens, uh, some grasses, some herbs, some things that look pretty much, they look good this time of year. Now we've got the sequence started. So the first shipment of, of fruit trees, shade trees, that kind of stuff are going to start the end of this month. So January, first part of February, it's like full on everything. Bring in the lilacs, bring in the forsythia, go, go, go. We have two acres of plants to fill up and it takes a while. It is, it's a dozen trucks or more. You don't just bombard the, the staff with that much plant material all at once. So it's a, it's a rhythm that we have, but they're starting to come. The first crop of pansies, we've got them week, I think the, the week before uh, Valentine's, so that first crop of winter blooming pansies, and so they're 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 leafing out. They look pretty good, but they're not the size. Got a few more days to go, but we're pushing them. So we're thinking forward. The 2024 pottery is here, and so it's kind of it's kind of fun to see the new styles. So things are starting to happen, but it's you have less time, you know, time sensitive. Like you have to get your tomatoes in now, or you won't have enough time. That's that's the gardening season. We don't have that. You've got until the end of March to finish your pruning. You can get your soil prep ready anytime this month. You're not planting until February. Before that's when the uh, potatoes and the garlics and the, the radishes and the carrots and the those things go in, the, the rhubarb, all those go in in February. You've got time. So enjoy it. Sip another cu cup of tea. Uh, bake, bake some more cookies. That's winter for gardeners. But this year... This this last week, I, don't know, I did some cleanup. Uh, then we kind of got it going. Here's the insider tip: If you're going to plant now, it's fine. Go ahead. Uh, if you find the plant you want, so I, for me it was an atlas cedar. So down in the courthouse, uh, the statehood tree is a blue atlas cedar. I wanted one of those. I live in Prescott, Arizona. Why wouldn't I want a statehood tree? In my backyard, if it's a big enough space, half acre lot, I can easily accommodate that. So I planted one and it'll block out some road noise and some homes over there. Don't have to, so it increases my view. It worked out. Here's the insider tip. Do all the regular stuff that you do. So you're gonna dig the hole wide, not that deep. You're going to add some mulch to loosen up that, that soil uh, to keep it from compacting so the roots can get through it faster. Put a little fertilizer in it because I know my soil is terrible. Uh, I actually staked the trees, so I know it's going to blow and get, get some snow. I know that's going to happen. It'll keep them upright, keep them healthier. Uh, the real secret is water. Water is your friend in winter, especially for new plants. 
And it's one that you take for granted because you're indoors. You don't have this time burden. You're not out there with a hose every day. In fact, you probably disconnected them and you only put them on with a uh, quick connect. You just, you're putting the hose on when you need it, which is not that often. And so you just don't, you forget to water things as much, especially new plants. And so one of, so I planted three, three trees, uh, two 15 gallon Arizona cypress and a five gallon uh, blue atlas cedar, the statehood tree. So two of the holes had some moisture, wasn't gooey wet, wasn't muddy. It was, but I could feel there was a little bit of moisture. That's good. Made the hole easier to dig. The other one where I put the Atlas Cedar bone dry and that ground was hard. And so I was mesmerized with how much moisture, how much I had the, ran the hose out there. I was amazed how much water that soil or that planting hole would accommodate. I didn't think it would ever fill up. And so you had to hydrate the surrounding soil and the plant itself. Now, I did that really well once. Now I'm set for a couple of weeks. I don't have to think about it. It's, it's enough. So they're not using a lot of moisture, but they are using all evergreens use moisture. Actually, all plants, all living things use moisture. But in the garden with your plants, the deciduous things, lose, they, they, they use a little less. Your evergreens like red tip photinias, your euonymus, your, um, all your, your conifers, the blue, the blue atlas cedar, Arizona cypress, they're using moisture. And if they have not had their, the, their roots rooted out for a couple of years, so the secret is two years, two growing seasons. If after they've been in for a couple growing season, the roots are now out into the surrounding soil, less pressure is on you. When they're brand new, you've got to be more accurate. You need to be more diligent. You need to put it on the calendar. I watered today. In two weeks, follow up again. And so that will keep them healthy. I find that folks, when they first plant a, let's say, a new spruce tree, or a beautiful, you've got some beautiful pine trees here at the garden center. Plant a new one. They don't water it enough when they first put it in the ground. So they didn't hydrate that ground well enough when they first put it in. They were hydrating the plant, not the, not the planting hole. You want that surrounding soil to be hydrated so that it doesn't wick away moisture from the plant you just put in the ground. If the ground's dry, which one of mine was just bone dry. I mean, it was brutally dry. Even after that rain we had, uh, what took seven, 10 days ago, it was bone dry. Another, a couple others, which were more of a slope. So the water kind of came towards those planting holes. Yeah, they had a little bit of moisture, not a lot. So they didn't, they didn't require as much hydration right off the right off the bat when I first put them in the ground. But uh, what I do is I'll, I'll I'll dig the hole, fill it halfway up with water, only to hydrate the surrounding soil. That's so the first bit of water is just for the soil around the plant. Then I'll pull the plant out of the bucket, put it in the ground, put my surrounding soil around it. Then I'll add some additional water to water that soil around that plant directly in the plant itself. So you're almost thinking twofold, water the soil, run the, then water the plant. Now, every follow-up, I'm assuming that that soil will stay hydrated because I, I put a lot of moisture into it. I'll follow up in a couple of weeks. I'm just mainly focused on the plant itself. So, and, and, and the soil just around the root of that plant. And when you do that, you have tremendous success next spring because the growth is going to be woo, just going to take off with new growth. Oh my gosh, especially for evergreens because evergreens really you only you get one shot at this. They grow in the spring and then they don't really grow anymore, especially for pine trees and spruce, junipers a little bit. They put on more flush in the spring and just a little bit more later on. But spring is your time. This is why it's a good time to put those kinds of things in the ground. And the insider tip, again, I just shared it with you. Water is your friend when planting in the winter. So hydrate those things. Put on a clock. Just put on a calendar. Put a, put a Google timer. Let Apple know. Remind me in two weeks, water that new, new pine tree. I just put it in the yard. And it will be a game changer because you'll get better growth next year. Got a lot in store. So a lot of good tips this week. Lisa Waters Lane is coming in with your garden questions right after this. 
Hi, Lisa here with the Plants of the Week and our Arizona Gold Euonymus. An excellent choice for colored hedges and as tough as they come. This evergreen displays bold gold, head-high foliage that grows even thicker when sheared. A single shrub makes a bold statement, but in rows they make excellent visual and sound barriers. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. For people who love bold gold hedges, they love to shop. You're listening to Garden Master Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join his daily podcast for timely garden advice, seasonally right for the gardens. Ken can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott or through his website at top10gardener.com. You're listening to Garden Master Ken Lane and the Top 10 Gardener podcast. Welcome to the Top 10 Garden Show. And back in the studio is Lisa Waters Lane. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are people asking, commenting, coming in for? What are people talking about around the town about their garden? So welcome mm-hmm. back to, to the uh, studio, Lisa. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, your holidays going okay? Very good. So Christmas done and gone. I've even got it packed up and put away. Yeah, boy, you're fast. <laughs> it's, I'm telling you, Christmas Eve, she's ready to just... Almost go. Uh, we, <laughs> so, had, we had it up early this we, year. We did not. We did. Yeah, we did. So, anyways, I was I was ready to pack it away, and it felt good. I'm proud of you. Sure. You didn't throw the poinsettias I out didn't. the front door. You kept I them for they're so beautiful. They were gorgeous. They're stunning. She got she brought in some new varieties, some new mm-hmm. colors. You know, we own a garden center. We can have the latest, greatest, newest thing. It's just a shame to have mm-hmm. it just destroyed in one night's cold well yeah they just have held up so well and you're right they are very very pretty so i thought hey, okay i'll leave them for a little while longer. till till thanks till um uh, <laughs> valentine's valentine's <laughs> we'll see if they make it that long I don't know. when they start dropping leaves that's what bothers me too i'd say throw them out they start to whine and complain about the shorter days or it right. got cold or too dry or i don't know chuck them then but they look so good now they proud do. of you yeah thank you what are people talking about? What's going on here so, that, uh, that that we're in between the holidays right. uh, and we're still drinking eggnog and they're still gardening <laughs> or they're at, gardeners are always thinking gardening for some that reason. That is true. That is true. So uh, <laughs> first question is from Mark. He says, does the rain we had last week count as a watering for the month or do I still need two deep waterings in the month? You know, I... Mark, I, I don't know how much rain came throughout all the regions. So this is broadcast throughout northern Arizona. And so, you know, the higher peaks might have gotten a little more, a little less. So without knowing your, you know, you get around a mountain, the front, the uh, west side gets a lot of rain. The back side gets none. So you get this like Granite Mountain has this weird, funky thing. One side gets so much rain and then the clouds dump their load and then they float over and then there's nothing left for the folks in the backside. So I, I'm not sure. Mark, I don't know. I would say if you have to ask the question, probably you need two waterings. So I, I did do some digging in our yard, did some planting this week, and the ground was dry. So it was, yeah. it was, it was dry. And now I've got heavy clay soil. So if you had more sandy soil, maybe it would have been a little bit wetter but i don't think so i, I don't think, think it was enough the other thing to think about is we hadn't had any rain for oh, yeah, a point. long time so that yeah. that soil just took everything yeah. in and it, it, there's yeah. no saturation yet that's for sure yeah so i would still water so you should water for those folks that are tuned in you should be watering two times a month a deep soak especially those plants that are, are newer if they're under two years old You've got a newer property. You've got a brand new, uh, let's say, a living Christmas tree. You just put in the ground. Uh, you need to be watering that mm-hmm. twice a month. A deep soak, like 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 you would in June when it's ninety five degrees out. Water it that much, and then let it go for a couple of weeks. So it's easy to overdo it this time of year, but it's easier to underdo it because you just you're thinking, oh, they're cold, right. they're fine. Yeah. You know, and evergreens especially, mm-hmm. they hold those needles until they are dead and they turn like in, in a week they go from green <laughs> people go what happened to brown like that with yeah. they died a month ago they just mm-hmm. you didn't know it yet right. so hydration hydration if yep. you're thirsty it probably is too and if you have to ask the question go ahead i would say a deep snow like six inches or more 
that's enough moisture. An inch of rain, and I know we didn't get that much, that might be enough. And that's where you're seeing the ground saturate and starting to flow. So that dry creek in the backyard, you're seeing that start to run. Mm -hmm. We didn't see that because the ground was dry. It absorbed every, every drop right. of rain. So it did take the edge off the forest, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So it's oh, good. Yeah. It's any, not bad. Any rain is good. Yep. I would also say if you really want to know, go out with a piece of rebar. Well, there you go. A long screwdriver. Go poke around in that soil, and yeah. that'll help you too. So you poke around, and if you can get the, uh, let's say, your biggest flathead screwdriver in your toolbox, I mean, not a skinny one, a, a fat, chubby one, uh, or a small piece of rebar. If you can get that in the ground, it's moist. If you got to like, oh my gosh, I can't get that in the ground. <laughs> it's dry. So that's right. the secret. Yeah. Okay. Next question is from Cheryl. She has a large peony in a pot. She wants to know if she can trim it back now. And if yes, do you cut it back down to the soil or do you leave yeah, some of the Yeah, good question. There? That's a good question. This is not just for containers. It's for ground, any maybe. peony in the ground, in the garden, raised beds, wherever. So they've grown up. So you've got English peonies are good knee, knee high or, or, or taller. Your Ito peonies are hip high. They're up to, they're, they're much bigger. And they're both treated the same way. So you're going to cut that back down to the ground and just as close as you can without nicking the eyelets that might be coming up. I haven't checked hours. So I still have hours up. It sits on my to-do list. I'll get mm -hmm. there eventually. eventually. <laughs> There's no rush. Right. So I'd say by the end of February, you should be cutting back your perennials including, per including the peonies. So you're cutting those back to, I don't know, an inch or two. To the ground something mm -hmm. like that now peonies are very robust they can go down to minus i think 40 or maybe minus 50 degrees they they don't mind the cold mm -hmm. at all and you'll find them start to emerge from the garden from the soil from that container uh about you know sometime after january so february sometime you'll start to see oh eyelets are coming up oh it's so gardeners go oh mm -hmm. spring's coming oh i can't wait for that flower in april and may so i'd say take your time Cut it back as close as you can and, and watch for, are there eyelets coming out yet? And I don't know yet, mm -hmm. but if you do, don't nick those because that's that next, this, this growth. spring's growth. Mm -hmm. But if not, just cut it back. Doesn't matter. It's okay. not going to hurt it to have right. it up. Not going to hurt it to have it back. They just don't care, but they don't want it. All that extra brown growth. They want last year's growth shading this year's new spring growth, they want the sunshine. So mm -hmm. probably if you start to cut it back, they'll start to the ground will warm up and you'll start to see that growth happen a little sooner. Mm -hmm. And water. Good question. Yeah. Oh, and water. <laughs> water your peonies. Don't let them, Don't let let them, them go dry. dry. Yeah. All right. I think we got time for one more. Uh, this one is from Amanda. She is getting ready to, um, she's got a raised bed she put in last year. She's getting ready. Okay. Wants to Get them ready for the coming spring. Yeah, easy. The question is, besides mulch uh, or soil, what else would you add into that? Sure. Bed? So, so if it's a brand new bed, or brand new or or older bed, mm -hmm. what happens is in raised beds because the space is so confined, it's only got this much soil. It can't reach out and go. I'm kind of this is kind of old soil. I need to root over there and pick up some more nutrients over there. It's it's confined. It's like a container garden. So you need to revitalize or refresh in that. And so for last year's uh, raised beds, it had plants in them. There's old roots. There's, there's last year's plants. Pull those things out. Old roots in the ground rot or they start to compost. They taint the soil and they keep other roots from growing in that space. That is not good when you're in a confined you know, raised bed space. You want to get rid of those. So, so filter that out and then plants use up the soil. And so you need to add some freshness to it. That's where your compost, we make a premium mulch that we compost it for a very long time. And we screen it down to quarter inch minus. It's very fine. So it looks like a rich, it's almost like coffee grounds and the plants just respond to it as nutrients. Manure, this is this time of year, look, get some barnyard manure. We, we make a deodorized manure. So it's not gross. So it's like, <laughs> I realize manure, poop is bad, stinky, gooey, gross, but not ours. We compost it an extra long time. And then we cut it with some real fine, well, our mulch. And so it comes out deodorized. You can't even tell us manure. You'll never see a, a poop nugget a turd <laughs> That's in there. Too much. Yeah, it's not going <laughs> to, that would be a good, good additive on top of there too. And then here's the insider tip. 
So our plants are grown in water's potting soil. So potting soil is a grower's mix. That's our grower's mix. And so our, our tomatoes or cucumbers or flowers, they're started in this, whether it's a cutting or a seed, we start it in water's potting soil. If you can have that top layer, let's see, top six to eight inches of your containers or, or raised beds, and you could put a few bags of water's potting soil on, and you're planting directly into that, you are going to have tremendous success because plants don't like to go through different soil types. They like the same, they like sameness. So if you can give it more of the same thing it's already grown in, it's going to just thrive and you'll get bigger plants sooner, faster. Anyway, top layer, add some water's potting. So other than that, you're ready to plant starting usually after Valentine's or so. Spring, so or spring plants. Yeah. Anyway, we are out of time. Yeah. Ken Elisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. Be right back after this. Hi, Waters with this week's Plant of the Week, our True Blue Fat Albert Spruce. At just 15 feet, this is the ideal evergreen for small gardens, excellent in front yards with limited space. The color is so blue all year long with the perfect evergreen shape. Dense, durable, and loves the sun, so it works well as a windbreak, screen, or sound barrier, and only found at... Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, for people who love the perfect blue spruce, love to shop. You're listening to Ken Lay, a.k.a. the Top 10 Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Family Garden Center. Listen daily as he answers the Top 10 Questions of the Week, streaming on Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you download your podcasts. You've tuned in to the Top 10 Garden Show with garden expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation daily as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Or visit face-to-face throughout the week where he can be found at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. So I started out the show by just sharing. I had put a few plants in the ground. So a couple 15 gallon Arizona cypress of a, a blue Atlas cedar, which is uh, the statehood tree that down on the Prescott courthouse square uh, over a hundred years ago uh, at our state's founding, we, we planted a pair of blue Atlas cedars there and they're still there and they're ancient. They're very tall. I think they're the second tallest tree on the courthouse square. The tallest tree by far, it overshoots it by another 20, 30 feet, is a redwood, believe it or not. It's on the back side of the courthouse, uh, closer to where the uh, Chamber of Commerce is, where the old city hall is over there. You'll see a, a very large redwood tree, surprisingly enough. They do grow here. So I've got a weeping redwood in my backyard. Very rare plant, but uh, I, I know the person that developed it, friend. Said, hey, you want one? Said, I'd love that. It'd be great. It's just thrived. It's now probably 40 feet tall. It's huge. It's, it's funky looking. It's Dr. Seuss looking, but conifers, we are surrounded by conifer, conifer forests or evergreen forests. So ponderosas, pinion pines, lots of juniper varieties, Arizona cypress. These are all natives of ours. Colorado spruce up on the ridgelines, uh, firs up on the ridgelines. They just love to grow here. And so they adapt well. And so I put a few more in. I thought I would share just, uh, I've got some, I know I live up in the Prescott Heights, Prescott Lakes area. So I overlook the Dells. So I can see granite Dells from our decks and patios. And so up in that region, the soil is ridiculously hard. I mean, just crazy clay soil. I mean, like you jump, I'm a big man. So I'm well over six foot, well over 200 pounds. I'm jumping on a brand new razorback shovel, new blade. It's not dulled. I mean, and I'm going in like an inch. So I'm digging these holes an inch at a time, jumping on this thing. It's a workout. I don't have to get on the uh, treadmill <laughs> that morning because I'm jumping on the shovel, but I got the holes in. It worked out, but I'd share a couple insider tips. Just there's some tricks to digging a hole in very hard soil. Now I own a 35 pound jackhammer and a 70 pound. So we've done planting for years. I'm an old landscaper, just so I'm used to, but I don't like breaking out that heavy equipment. I have to I have to drag an electrical cord. They're, they're heavy as all get out. And then they beat the living daylights out. Of if I can, I would far much rather just do it with a shovel. 
maybe a pick. Maybe if I have to, a digging bar. If I can do it just with a pick or just a shovel or just a shovel, I'll do it that way because it's just easier than hauling all that stuff back there. Here's the insider tip. The mistake I find with, with rookie moves is you're digging your hole. It's going to be three times as wide, same depth. Okay. That's, that's the basic parameter. We've got handouts on that. You can, we will, every time you buy a tree or shrub, you get this handout on here's how you plant. Here's a stuff, but, but here they don't tell you how to dig the actual hole, physical hole. Now this is going to be for you, for you folks that have been gardening for a lot of years. You've, you've, Gardened in hard pan, you already know this, but this is free. Maybe you folks maybe knew the area. So you tend to dig from the, you're jumping on it. You get that first layer of soil, which is usually pretty easy. And then it gets harder from there. You're, you're kind of going around the radius, digging your hole. That's not the way to dig in hard soil. So you don't dig from the outer edge and push in. So you're thinking that gets you a funnel shaped and then you're having to break out the digging bar, the picks to get the side holes, the side hole, you know, ex expanded some. So it's easier. It makes sense. But what I do is I'll tend to dig. And I don't know if I can explain this well enough. I'm going daisy wheel around the hole. So I'm doing from the outer edge. Once I define my hole, I'm now not, not the, the blade is not pointing towards the inside or the middle of the hole. It's pointing towards the the outer edges. So the, the I'm right-handed. So the right-hand side of the shovel is facing the outside edge of that planting hole. Now I'm jumping on it and I get a much easier way to dig a, instead of a funnel, an actual planting hole with side, with side walls and without having to break the pick out so much. And it, it works really well, especially if there's no rocks. So one of these holes, man, I, I hit a boulder, not a boulder, Maybe, maybe a, a toaster size rock, a boulder is like really big, but I could easily loosen it up, lift it out, get it out of the way. You know, that, that was a pain. So I had to get the shovel to dig around it, trying to, to open this up. But once I got that rock out of there, I kept going with this daisy wheel, kind of like a spoke of a bike. I've got the shovel on each one of those spokes and I'm just, it doesn't, it, it makes the hole go deeper, easier, faster, more consistent without having to break out heavier equipment. It's so easy to go with that radius and have the shovel kind of scooch in and try to, on, with, with heavy soil, hard soil, it just wants to slide to the middle. So you end up with this cone-shaped hole and you're now, how am I gonna dig the sides out? Think of a bicycle, just spikes, bicycle spokes, and it just makes it easier for it to get down. I know this is super, super easy going, Ken, you're, it's ridiculous. I can't believe I tuned into this. But if you haven't dug, if you don't have a lot of practice with it, kind of go, oh, well, that's, that kind of makes sense. Well, they don't teach you. I can't Google. I can't ask the Google machine to tell me how to do that. But I can tune into the Mountain Gardener and Ken will help you. So throughout the week, uh, I'm here. I can help you with more. I've got the handout. We got more segments right after this, though. Don't go anywhere. Your yard will turn heads with stunning evergreen shrubs from Waters Garden Center. Waters grows greener shrubs for year-round interest, as well as blooming shrubs for pops of color in spring. Attract birds with a tall privacy hedge and the berries that follow. Plus, winter evergreens are easier to grow than other plants. No matter your landscape, we have the perfect shrubs for a greener winter. Visit Waters Garden Center in Prescott or online at watersgardencenter.com. Top 10 Gardener, your source for timely garden advice, seasonally correct for the garden. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. You've tuned in to the Top 10 Gardener with garden expert, Ken Lane. Join him daily as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And back in the studio... Lisa Waters Lane. She comes back, well, not just once, but twice each show. <laughs> so she comes in for her Q&A section. Then she comes mm -hmm. in too. She just agreed years and years and years and decades ago <laughs> <I'm not that old. laughs> to do this, to come in and just take a segment and give me a different perspective. Give mm -hmm. us, the listeners, a softer side of gardening. Mm -hmm. 
that's my gal. So Lisa, welcome back to the studio. Thank you. Always so good. how, what you got, what you've been thinking about garden wise, you got the whole house packed up. Yeah. You're, what are you thinking about bringing more house plants home or something or yeah. more? Okay. So, yeah. So I put Christmas away cause it's, I mean, I love Christmas, but there's a time got to put it away. I love Christmas more. So my thing of putting Christmas away always makes me want to move the furniture around in the house yeah. or because yeah, it just gives you a time, fresh start, yeah. maybe new year, fresh start. Do I move the sofa? Da, da, da. So I kind of start playing with things. Um, but yes, I realized I have room for at least two more house plants on this one table that oh, we table. have Good. by a window. So yes, I'm going to be I was going to ask new ones. big ones or small ones. Not so. Big. We don't okay. have room for great big in our house because we have big furniture, but <laughs> we have lots of shelves and spot spots to put house plants. Yeah, on, it's perfect. So. Well, it's beautiful yeah. what you're doing. It looks fantastic. I like the way it's Thank coming you. together. So 2000, the, the next year is just going to be fantastic. Right. So I noticed, I mean, our house plant sales always seem to go up the first part of the year. Yeah. And that's because people like me, they re raise they remodel, the tree's gone. They're like, oh, it's kind of bare or maybe I need something there. So it's always fun to go start thinking about house plants, shopping house plants. So I thought we would talk about a few things that you should probably think about before you start shopping. Okay. Okay. Like so, which garden center to go to? Like Waters Garden <laughs> know, Center? Or given. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Figure their fans are tuned in right, for a reason. Right. First one is light. Um, check if in the spot where you want to put this plant, is it a bright light? Is it a dark light? Is yeah. it right in front of a window? I mean, there's there's things to think about the setting of where you're going to want to put this plant because that makes a difference in the type of plant that you want to have in that environment. Sure. So if you have a really dark space, some bathrooms can be dark, um, hallways. Back know, bedroom, bedroom that you yeah. forget about all the time. Right. So if you have a spot that's a low light, pick a plant like a ZZ plant yeah. or Sansevieria, Chinese evergreen. Um, those are all plants that don't mind. They're still going to grow and look nice, even if, if, if there's not a lot of light there. If you have a nice bright room, you know, it gives you a lot of options. I always discourage people from putting a plant directly in front of a window. Uh, especially if there's sun coming through that a window. South facing. So uh, north is a little different than yeah, south facing. It's a little hotter. Definitely. But if you're getting sun right through that window, it's very easy to burn yeah. your plant leaves. Um, it's and then the other thing is that the cold. Sometimes when we get this winter, if that plant is up against that window, you'll actually get cold damage. Yeah. On that plant. So just kind of a couple of few things to think about as far as where you can want to place that plant in your home is you want to pick the white right one for the right environment. The other one is ease. How much of a houseplant guru are you? I want them to be exotic <laughs> and super easy. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work that right. So I'm, I've gotten better with houseplants, but I started with ones that I knew were easy, that I knew I knew yeah. how to take care of. You know, like I said before, ZZ plant. That one's terrific because you only water every three weeks. When you something remember. like that. Yeah. <laughs> Sansevierias or mother-in-law tongue is another one that's yeah. very low water usage. Uh, Chinese evergreen. There's some that are just, you don't have to think about them a lot. And those are the ones that I like a lot. Um, I've tried to branch out. I tried to get into some alocasias, um, zebra plant, things like that. And I've struggled a little bit with those. I'm still working with them. You I shouldn't travel a... <laughs> so much. That's the problem. You're out of town for two, three weeks at a time. They just tend to be a little more persnickety. Yeah. You know, They're, so if, if, if this is new to you or you feel like you have brown thumbs, you know, take the time and pick the yeah. right plant for you. Don't, don't start with one that's going to be takes a lot of your time and energy get one that you kind of just walk by and go look how pretty that is <laughs> and don't overwater it because that's yeah. certainly something that's one where it does pay if you're just starting out especially and it's just kind of hard you go into the grocery store and you, you just you see this pretty plant. You go, oh i want to buy that mm -hmm. Uh, and it's affordable and you're on the shopping spree with your watermelon and your frozen <laughs> pizza. This is if you're starting out or you got a, a specific room that you've struggled with or you're just not sure, come talk to professionals. This is where a garden center is here to help you. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a little bit bigger, healthier plant. We've hard. So there's a transition between the farm to here. So we there's a 
a way to get it hardier mm -hmm. for in your house? And then which one? Which one do I go with? Well, tell us where you're at. Take a picture. Yeah. We'll tell you which one. You know, this is a perfect spot for this. We've grown mm -hmm. it here. So our radars are always up for where plants grow best. Right. We can help. We don't mind sharing that information with mm -hmm. you. Yeah, that was one of my other points. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> is get good information. Yeah. Because you're right. You can buy, we know you can buy house plants. Everybody no. and their dog has yeah. a house plant. But you want to get one that was going to work for you and you're going to get, you want good advice. Yeah. Uh, so many times, you know, some plants like moisture, some don't. Some, your fertilizer makes a big difference in which fertilizer you're yeah. choosing, which potting soil, getting the right pot for your plant. Um, and if there's, if you take the plant home and a few weeks down the road, something's going wrong with it. You want to be able to come back to a place and go, yeah. hey, what's going on with this plant? It's kind of got a weird look. And and all of our people are excellent with house yeah. plants. Um, we can really offer advice, give good suggestions. Um, so that's important as well. But that being said, new house plants. We'll have our new shipment of house plants in next week. Okay. So all kinds of cool new ones. Yeah. And and think about house I guess it's like all of gardening. They're coming up with new Yeah, varieties it's kind of fun. It's really fun. The time, yeah. you know? We're used to the pothos. I mean, who hasn't had a pothos at one point in their life? Every dorm room, I think, has a pothos. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Which is great because they're easy care plants to grow. But they're coming out with new varieties of pothos. My new favorite one is the neon pothos. Uh, just because it's just a really bright, bright green color. Yeah. And I love in a house, especially, it really gives you some added color into your home. Um, the philodendron, philodendrons have been around for eons, um, but they've come up with some really new cool ones where like the stems are a real dark, dark red with the green leaves. They've got a neon philodendron. Um, so it's just really cool, different colors that they're coming out with. Uh, so it's not just the same old pothos that your grandmother had. This year's uh, color of the year by Pan, uh -huh. Pantene, Pantone, Pantone. That's it. Pantene's <laughs> hair wash. Pantone <laughs> is a blue. So they're, really? they're going with a not real dark, like royal blue, but like a, like, well, I don't, anyway, darker I than. It was peach. You know, I've seen so many different <laughs> ones. Maybe it is peach. Anyway, color is the thing. Yeah. Not white. So green looks really good with white. But if you've got color on your walls other than eggshell, <laughs> yeah, probably the color, the lighter, the, the, the red stems, mm -hmm. the neons, they really pop. They mm -hmm. really look like designer-esque in, in, a, in, a, in a room that's it's got more new furniture or something. And you go, you need something alive mm -hmm. that just really brings it out and go, wow, yeah. I just want to read a book here. Watch, <laughs> watch the game here. This is great. Right. Yeah, I love the new lighter colors. I love the variegated colors. Oh, yeah. I just think those are really neat, get, you know, attractive. And then speaking of colors, uh, we also have a lot of new pottery in. So you can also get that beautiful new plant. Yeah. You can put it in a beautiful new pot. We can actually pot for you. Um, we do that for people at very minimal cost. Yeah. Uh, and we'll help you get the right size because what I find is a lot of people yeah. jump up in too big a size and then they go, what's wrong with my plant? It's just kind of sitting there. Well, because you put it in that great big pot, it's rooting out. Yeah. It's, it's forgetting that it has to grow up. It's just putting on roots. So we'll help you get the right size, the right soil. Um, get a moisture meter. Oh my goodness. The <laughs> easiest tool ever. <laughs> Cheapest, easiest tool at every yeah. house. If you have a house plant, you need one. They take the gas out of it. <laughs> when I water the house plant room here at the store, I have a moisture meter in my pocket yeah. because soils are, can be deceiving. And what you think is wet is dry. And what you think is dry is wet. Yeah. So that moisture meter takes that gas out of it. So if you have a plant that you know, like, like a spathophyllum, peace lily, they like that moistness. Yeah. So you want to keep them on a little more on the moist side, as opposed to a ZZ or a Chinese evergreen that wants to be dry. Yeah, bone. So, you know, it takes that guesswork out. So get the right tools, the right information, the right plants. We are out of time, Lisa. Great yeah. advice. Thank you so much. That's super, super good insight. So uh, Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners, be right back after this. Not everyone can grow wildflowers, but we'll make sure you're not one of them. At Waters, we know which wildflowers sprout, thrive, and bloom with success. We're wild about wildflowers with many of our own Arizona blends. Like our Arizona native mix, butterfly and hummingbird mixes, and all are big, bold, and beautiful. At Waters, we know wildflowers and winter's a season to spread new seed. 
Waters Garden Center, where people who love their flowers wild, they love to shop for seed. You're listening to garden expert Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Additional shows of this podcast, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook, Instagram, at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Welcome to the Top 10 Garden Show with Ken Lane. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. Now for those of you that are tuned in to the Apple or Spotify podcast, you know, this is video, this, you get the video presentation of this. So you see me in my studio. Yeah, you see my office and my office at the garden center. And I'm overlooking some corrals. I've got this beautiful layer of wildflowers outside my window. I look at, watch butterflies, hummingbirds. I've just cut those back. And so I'm getting them ready for spring. And now, if you see me looking off camera, I'm looking out my window in my office, and there's a pair, husband-wife team, of roadrunners back there. They are loving that I cut back the uh, wildflowers. And you can see them hunting back in between all the, the cuttings and stuff. I just kind of, I've got them up on the fence. I mean, just. It's fun to watch them. So roadrunners are a magical thing in Arizona. It's what we're kind of famous for. And they're pretty common. We see them all the time. You see roadrunners, especially up here all the time. Gila monsters are the other ones. So, you know, scorpions we hear all the time. That's more of a desert thing. And who wants to see a scorpion? Come on. They are pretty cool. A uh, horny toads. Uh, we were... That's another one we're famous for, and we have a lot of those. Uh, not, not as many as I'd like, because those I like to grab those with the grandkids. They're always mesmerized going, oh, this funky little lizard, and you're willing to pick him up, talk, let me pet him, turn him over, have him sleep while I rub his belly. Uh, and we found a, uh, we rented a house up in Durango last summer, and the horny toads were thick up there. The grandkids were, they were in the hunt. Pop up. There's another one over here. Get over here. Pick him up yourself, son. He's they're not gonna bite you. So you kind of trade them <laughs> anyway. Okay, where was I going? If you see me out looking off camera, because I'm looking at my pair of roadrunners back there. So it's kind of fun. Uh preparing soil. I am getting my garden soils ready for next spring. So I, I'm I'm actively putting manures, mulch, compost, some fertilizer on there. I'm getting the soil ready. And so the last year's vegetable gardens have been pulled out. They're just exposed. They've been out, well, for a month and a half, two months, for a long time. Now I'm getting the actual soils ready. And here's the ideal thing for you folks tuned in. If you're hardcore gardeners, this is whether it's flowers or vegetables, if you've got raised beds or garden areas where you like to garden for those things, you need to think ahead about six, eight weeks before you start planting, especially if you're going to add some real nutrients like manure. Manure is just such good stuff uh, that for, for gardens. Plants just live on. They, they love that, but they tend to be hot. So they're very high in uh, nitrogen. That's nitrogen. That's, remember, nitrogen, phosphorus, potash. That first number is nitrogen. That's what cr creates kind of new, luscious leaves, big, fast growth. Tomatoes love it. Corn needs it. Fast growing plants, you know, dahlias love, will, will grow bigger, better, especially dinner plates. Uh, your petun geraniums love manures in the, in the gardens, but they don't like it right before I'm planting. You really do want to get this on now. Let it rest, settle, put it on now, pray for snow. Let it just kind of even everything out, kind of get it all percolating in there. And you turn the soil over and then start planting just like that. And so I'm actively putting those things in. Here's what the book says. So you put a three inch layer of composted material on top of the garden soil tilled down to one shovel's depth or one rotor tiller or however you're measuring one disc if you're big gardens. But ideally, the plants used up that organic material you gave it last year. You're going to need to replenish that. And this is something that you're going to do every single winter. 
You need to add some freshness to that. Now, here's a mistake, a rookie move. I've, I've made it myself when I was a new gardener. I see a lot of new folks coming in. You know, the internet is crazy. I don't know why. Stop looking on that Google machine. It's just, it dumbfounds you, gets you the wrong information. Uh, they're telling you to, to add sticks, logs underneath your, your soil at fresh leaves. Never add fresh, uncomposted material into your soil. It robs nitrogen from your plant's roots. It actually stunts the growth next spring. You only want to introduce composted material into your soil. Please, for the love of gardening, do not put fresh manure into your gardens. It's teeming with nasty stuff. And then it introduces grubs and all kinds of crazy, crazy wormy kind of things that eat the roots of your plants. Totally. I've seen so many mistakes. You want to compost these things first off to the side, let it heat up, let it, let it compost down. So compost pile will actually shrink as it composts. So the nutrients kind of the humic acids and the, the all the beneficial stuff that's there kind of increases as, as the mycorrhizal, the fungi break this material down. When it's down to its last core, you get like humic acid and nitrogens and phosphorus and all this rich stuff the plants love. They, you don't want to compost this stuff in the soil, in your gardens uh, directly, or it just totally messes up. It'll mess with you. You just, you go, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. They grew so well last year. No, they're not growing. It's because the plants are, they're it's composting there in the ground. So I'm adding composted manure, about an inch, another inch, maybe inch and a half, another inch and a half of just water's premium mulch. I'm adding um, my own material. So if I, I know what's in it. I'm happy with it. It's all organic. I know what I'm introducing. And I know that it's going to grow. It's not going to keep breaking down. But I'm trying to put that kind of generous layer of manure on top of the soil so it has time to kind of percolate and, and mitigate some of the nitrogen. That way, when I start putting my potatoes in, when I start putting in those, those root crops, you know, rhubarbs and uh, radishes and onions and garlics, all the stuff you start real early in spring, it's not going to burn those. It's not going to taint them. And so start now. I'm also adding, while I'm doing that, I'm adding some fertilizer, especially phosphorus. So I'm adding superphosphate, 0180. Uh, usually, usually I'm putting the fertilizer down first and I'm putting my, I've got a tomato and vegetable food. So it's, I put that down and then I'm putting my, my, my organic kind of composted material for uh, the compost, the manure is on top of that. And I'm just letting it set there. I'm going to let, let it sit there for a month, month and a half. And then I'm going to turn it under, usually at the beginning of February, somewhere in there. I got some time. I'll kind of turn it, kind of get it ready. Uh, and then usually by the end of February, I'm starting to plant. I mean, you can put lettuce. You can put spinach. You can put all those leafy broccoli, cauliflower, all those early spring things, especially at the Prescott layer and, and lower. You folks over in Cottonwood, Camp Verde. Sedona, you could probably cheat it even a little, little further. And so, but I'm, I'm thinking ahead. Always think a season ahead if you're revitalizing your, your containers. Really what I'm doing for, for, for me, I grow a lot of container things. So you really want some freshness in those containers. If you grew some big plants in that pot last year, I'm taking that top layer of potting soil. Is there you're not adding manure into pots. That's just too rich. You want more potting soil than that. But I'm trying to add fresh potting soil. I'll take the first foot or so, eight to eight inch to 12 inch, and I'm taking that out and I'll add that to my raised beds, the big garden areas. So I'll just go, eh, a little bit of that makes no real difference over there, but I need some fresh potting soil here. And then I'll take a bag of fresh waters potting soil. That's her growers mix. And I'll top off that container I'm trying to transition the soils as I'm as I'm growing. So this year I'm growing it fresh in my containers. And next year I'll take that top layer, add it to my my raised beds or out there in the garden, you know, landscape gardens out there. And then I'll add some freshness. And so then I'll add manures to my ra big raised beds, the bigger areas. And that seems to make a, a real difference. So if you struggled with consistency, 
they plant, they grew good this year and the next year they didn't so much. It's probably because of the materials that you're adding into the soil. It's either detrimenting, it's, it's, it can hinder you or it can really help. And so adding a three inch layer of organic matter and let it sit there for six, eight weeks, and then go ahead and plant. It's going to be a game changer in your gardens. At least that's, my name's Ken. We're just friends talking over the airwaves. It really works for me in my gardens. I think it will for you too. Be right back with more after this. My living room feels so empty. Now that the Christmas tree is gone, the house just seems so blah. Brighten it up with a big, bold, beautiful plant from Waters Garden Center. Fill that cavernous space with tall tropicals, colossal cactus, and sizable succulents that bring the great outdoors indoors. Make a gorgeous green space you can enjoy all year, not just for a season. Unique, exclusive, one-of-a-kind houseplants found only at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You're listening to garden expert Ken Lane. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Thanks for tuning in to the Top 10 Garden Show. You've tuned in to the Top 10 Gardener with garden expert Ken Lane. Join him daily as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. Now I mentioned a couple times in the show that uh, I've done some, some planting this week. So I've been cleaning up my landscapes, pruning things back, getting some old native stuff. Some of them just out of there. Some of these oaks are just, oh my gosh, they need to be trimmed back. They're like a weed. Uh, so it's a, uh, some of my pinion pines needed some help, some fertilizing, taking care of pampering them, letting, getting the dead wood out. So I've, I've, I've op opened up some areas. And then I'm seeing that I need a few extra plants. So I've added a couple Arizona cypress and a, a blue atlas cedar, which is the Arizona statehood tree down on the Prescott Courthouse. That's the original tree planted back over 100 years ago, the, the day of our founding of uh, the state of Arizona. We, the citizens of Prescott, planted some ceremonial trees down there. Apropos, it's a beautiful area. It's the biggest trees in the front area where Bucky, uh, the statue of Bucky O'Neill, that front statue, it's it's just to the, as you're looking at the front courthouse, it's just the left. That's the state hitcher. Plan one of those. And so with trees, it, this is a good time to put them in the ground. I had mentioned watering is a, is a secret to healthy growth for next spring to keep them growing. So go ahead and plant. Just make sure you water them. You can't plant once and be done until you turn the irrigation back on in, in April. That's not, the plants are not going to thrive with that. They might live, but if you want to plant them and have them really exceed, kind of really grow out next spring, this is a great time to plant as long as you water them. The other insider tip, it seems counterintuitive, but you really do need to stake trees in winter. I don't care if it's a, a, a deciduous plant or an evergreen plant. You need to stake trees. Now, deciduous, those things that lose their leaves, you wouldn't think you need them. But they're going to eat along. They're going to take off with new growth next spring. And then they start catching the wind and they start to lean on you. You really need to stake. With evergreens, especially those fast growing like Arizona cypress, it's one of the fastest growing evergreen trees. It grows 20, 25 feet tall, 12 or more feet wide. This is beautiful, thick, fast growing, luscious evergreen tree. Well, when you put them in the ground, they're a little skinnier. You wouldn't think you'd need it. They are pretty heavy. They're sitting up on their own by themselves. But what happens is the, the, the late spring snow is so heavy that it loads up on those branches and then it just kind of flops over. And so you don't want that to happen. It doesn't break the trunk typically. But it just it can it can disrupt new root growth. The plants are still budding. They're still pushing new roots out. So that top growth, you're seeing the the bud swell right now on the top growth. Of, let's say your apples or your pears or your your cypress. Your your uh, I noticed that the aspens they're they're swelling. They're they're actually actively growing. Slow, but they're growing. The same thing happens with your roots. You don't want to, that root ball to shift 
and, and discourage it, break some of those, but, but just staking it. It's easier to stake now. Just tie it once at the top towards the middle. Put a stake on either side of the root ball. Don't put a stake right next to the trunk. You want that tree to move but not fall over. You want that tree to, to leaf out and, and be exposed to the wind so it becomes strong but not lean to the northeast. So staking is critical, I think, for planting in the mountains where it's windy. For the mountains of Arizona, you need to stake trees, especially evergreens. I don't care what size. So my little tiny five gallon, I used a couple bamboo stakes. My big old 15 gallon Arizona Cypress, they were beautiful, icy blues. I put a lodgepole on either side, took one tie to the trunk and then tied it off to these trunk. And I'll take that off next year. Probably this time next year, I'll take it off. But for now, it looks healthy. That's how you stake a tree in your backyard. All right, Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. Until next week, Happy New Year, everyone. As the days get longer and brighter, houseplants can struggle and scorch, but we have the solution. At Waters, we've organized our houseplants from A to Z for the brightest of sunny locations, many even bloom. With experts that know plants and how to make them grow. Shipments of the freshest houseplants in town have just arrived from A to Z and ready for a bright new home. Waters Garden Center, where people who love bright green houseplants, they love to shop, found in Prescott. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in landscape that just feels better, then tune in daily to the Top 10 Garden Podcast. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.